What is a blockchain? A blockchain is actually a rather simple data structure. Let's assume that you have a bunch of data and you want to form a blockchain out of it. How would we do that? Well, we'll just carve a chunk of that data off and we'll call it, I don't know, a block? And we'll put an empty header on it and now we've got a one block blockchain. When more data comes along, we can form a second block and in the header of it, we'll put the hash of the entire first block. This hash will have to be a cryptographic hash, which means it has two important properties. One is it's really cheap and easy for us to recompute it, which means that we can at any time validate that the first block is okay by recomputing its hash and comparing it to the hash we've stored in the second block. The second property it has is it's next to impossible for an attacker to go and corrupt our first block in a way which it will pass our hash validation. So any corruption will be detected and we won't be fooled. And then when we want to add a third block to our blockchain, we just use the hash of the second block. And for a fourth block, we use the hash of the third block and so on. So it's just a chain of blocks chained together by the hashes of the prior blocks. So why are we using hashes instead of pointers to chain this together? Well, it means that the blockchain is actually kind of has this really useful property, which is we only need to find one trusted friend to give us the very last block in the blockchain. And as long as we get a good copy of that, any other blocks we get from any other computers on the network, whether they are our best buddies computers or whether they're computers owned by hackers we don't trust, it doesn't matter. We can validate by validating all these hashes that our blockchain is intact, that it hasn't been corrupted by anyone, and we've got a perfect copy of the blockchain, all starting from just having one block, which we got from a trusted partner. So that's really it. That is the blockchain data structure, and that's what you need to understand about it in order to understand the Bitcoin blockchain consensus. But I want to explain one other detail simply because it's interesting and kind of useful for understanding how Bitcoin works. And it is this. Bitcoin, in its blocks and its blockchain, store every single transaction that's ever occurred in Bitcoin back to the very start of the Bitcoin cryptocurrency. And as a result, it's getting really big. There's a lot of blocks and like, where are you going to store them all? You're running out of space, right? Well, maybe, but Bitcoin does something clever. They don't actually store the transaction data in the blocks of the blockchain itself. Instead, in the blocks of the blockchain, they store a reference to a data structure called a Merkle tree. A Merkle tree is a binary tree, and it's a binary tree where each node contains the hash of the two nodes underneath it. And so you just iterate, you've got hash, 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 and then when you get to the leaves, that's where you store your transaction data. So why do we use this Merkle tree? What's, what's the benefit of it? Well, it means that if we are running a Bitcoin client, we can just download the transactions we care about. For example, we might download only the transactions for coins which haven't been spent yet and ignore all the other coins that have already been spent because no one's ever going to refer to them ever again. That saves us a lot of disk space. And if at any point we decide we want to verify that we trust everything in our data structure, we can still recompute all of the hashes starting from the transactions at the leaves up through the Merkle tree and up through the Bitcoin blockchain and end up with a validation that the whole thing has not been corrupted. So that's kind of cool. And so that is all you need to understand about the Bitcoin blockchain data structure. Please keep on watching to the next video where we're going to learn about how we replicate that data structure from one computer to another, forming a consensus.